I would like to shout out Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hello and welcome to the Broken Sword. Today we are looking at what the wargs are and where they came from. Just at the moment, the wolves trotted howling into the clearing. All of a sudden, there were hundreds of eyes looking at them. Still, Dory did not let Bilbo down. He waited till he had clambered off his shoulders into the branches, and then he jumped for the branches himself, only just in time. A wolf snapped at his cloak as he swung up and nearly got him. In a minute, there was a whole pack of them yelping all around the tree and leaping up at the trunk, with eyes blazing and tongues hanging out. But even the wild wolves, for so the evil wolves over the edge of the wild were named, cannot climb trees. The wolves, also known as the wild wolves, are a race of creatures used by the forces of evil from Middle Earth. Their first true origin is not known, but we can make some educated guesses about their history. Although they are described in the Lord of the Rings as being the servants of Sauron, it is thought that they could be much older, being descendants of the creatures that had originally been bred by Morgoth all the way back in the Elder Days. If we want a good background on just what these wargs really are, then there is no better place to look than a description from the legendary Tolkien scholar Tom Shippey. When talking about Tolkien's wargs, he says along the lines of that warg, or the wargs, or wild wolves, are a race of fictional wolf creatures in J.R.R. Tolkien's books about Middle Earth. They are usually in league with the goblins or orcs whom they permitted to ride on their backs into battle. It is probable that they are descended from Draugruines werewolves, or of the wolfhounds of the line of Karkaroth of the First Age. They are portrayed as somewhat intelligent, with a language of sorts, and are consciously in league with the orcs, rather than wild animals the orcs have tamed. The concept of wolf riding orcs first appears in the Tale of Tenuviel, an early version of the story of Beren and Luthien written in around the 1920s, posthumously published as a part of the History of Middle Earth collection. In The Hobbit, the wargs appear twice, once by working with goblins in hunting Bilbo Baggins, Gandalf and the Dwarves just east of the Misty Mountains, and then once again at the Battle of Five Armies. In The Lord of the Rings, they are most prominently mentioned in the middle of the Fellowship of the Ring, where a band of wargs unaccompanied by orcs attacks the Fellowship in Eregion. And also then, during the War of the Ring in the Third Age, being the years 3018 to 19, wolves prowled outside the walls of Bree. Here they get distinguished as just regular old wolves, as they are just looking for food. So now we have looked at Shippy. What else can we add to this? Well, the wargs are mainly based from the Hithyglia, better known as the Misty Mountains. But are these wargs really any different from the wolves that are also mentioned by Tolkien? Well, if we look again at what Tom Shippy said in that it is probable that they are descended from Draugreen's werewolves, or of the wolf hounds of the line of Karkaroth of the First Age. But what are these two? Well, first of all, both of these lines were said to have been bred and allies of the original Dark Lord Morgoth. Draugreen was the first werewolf. He was bred from wolves and then possessed by an evil spirit sent by Morgoth himself. He lived with his master Sauron in Tol in Galhoth in Upper Syrian. He would eventually be slain by one of the hunting dogs of Arome the Hunter called Huan, and this would be in the year 465 of the First Age during the quest of the Silmaril, and from this Beren and Luthien would use his pelt as a way to sneak into Angband itself, which is the dark fortress of Morgoth. But you may also wonder, well, why does this make them a strong link to the wargs? And this is because Draugreen, being the first werewolf, also had the ability to speak. And it is said wargs also had this ability, meaning it is likely they descended from him. But then what about the next one, being Karkaroth? He was bred from the foul breed of Draugreen. He was fed the flesh of both men and elves, and was considered to have been the greatest and most powerful wolf to have ever lived. He was used by Morgoth as a guard at the gates of Angband, and would be the one to mortally wound both of Huan and Beren. His most famous deed was when he bit off the hand of Beren while he was still holding a Silmaril, 
So, while swallowing the hand and wrist, the Silmaril went inside his stomach too. This would burn Karkroth from the inside out, until eventually both Juan and Karkroth would slay each other in combat. Surely not the best way to go at all. From the histories of these two, you can see how powerful they originally were when powered by Morgoth, and over the years having them breed to the point of becoming what we know as wargs seems to kind of make sense. After all, like I kind of mentioned, the wargs can speak their own language and are of course very wolf-like. It just seems to be the logical way of thinking. Now it is probably also worth adding an argument against this point, even if it may not be the strongest one, but hey, maybe it gets your mind thinking a bit or brings up some other thoughts that you can even add in a comment down below. But anyway, in the Lord of the Rings chapter of many meetings, Gandalf is talking to Frodo, about a lot of things of course, but one thing that comes up is about the servants of Sauron. And here, Gandalf says, saying amongst other things, how Sauron has wargs and werewolves within his ranks. So Gandalf describes them as being separate beings, meaning there is a chance they did come from different paths and maybe these wargs came from a different line to the werewolves. But still, as I said, it may not be the strongest because most likely, at least to me anyway, they most likely come from the same ancestors, they are just different offshoots that have come down throughout the ages. But hey, like I said, I thought it could be worth a mention. But now to finish off, I thought hearing a bit of their appearance in the Lord of the Rings could be a nice way to round up this video, with this coming from the chapter of A Journey in the Dark, and this is before the Fellowship reaches Moria. Now I will say, this quote is a bit of a longer one, but it does not only describe how the wargs attack, it also gives us a bit of a glimpse into the power of Gandalf. And well, when is that not fun to see? The night was old, and westward the waning moon was setting, gleaming fitfully through the breaking clouds. Suddenly Frodo started from sleep. Without warning, a storm of howls broke out fierce and wild all about the camp. A great host of wolves had gathered silently and was now attacking them from every side at once. Fling fuel on the fire, cried Gandalf to the hobbits. Draw your blades and stand back to back. In the leaping light, as the fresh wood blazed up, Frodo saw many grey shapes spring over the ring of stones. More and more followed. Through the throat of one huge leader, Aragorn passed his sword with a thrust. With a great sweep, Boromir hewed the head off another. Beside them, Gimli stood with his stout legs apart, wielding his dwarf axe. The bow of Legolas was singing. In the wavering firelight, Gandalf seemed suddenly to grow. He rose up, a great menacing shape like the monument of some ancient king of stone set upon a hill. Stooping like a cloud, he lifted a burning branch and strode to meet the wolves. They gave back before him. High in the air he tossed the blazing brand, it flared with a sudden white radiance of lightning, and his voice rolled like thunder. Now Anadrith Amen, now Dan e Nugalhoth, he cried. There was a roar and a crackle, and the tree above him burst into a leaf and bloom of blinding flame. The fire leapt from treetop to treetop, the whole hill was crowned with dazzling light. The swords and knives of the defenders shone and flickered. The last arrow of Legolas kindled in the air as it flew, and plunged burning into the heart of a great wolf chieftain. All the others fled. Slowly the fire died till nothing was left, but falling ash and sparks. A bitter smoke curled above the burned tree stumps, and blew darkly from the hill, as the first light of dawn came dimly in the sky. Their enemies were routed, and did not return. So there we have it a look into just what the wargs are and where they came from. With that last quote, seeing the description of how the Fellowship was stood and made to attack their enemies, I feel that may have given Peter Jackson a bit of inspiration about how he set his Fellowship up when being attacked within the Mines of Moria rather than just outside them. You can just picture the hobbits back to back and Aragorn, Boromir, Legolas and Gimli all slaying their foes. The only thing we didn't get in the mines was Gandalf using some almighty magic but it is still awesome to see in words just how powerful Gandalf could have been, when you know truly this was just a fraction of his power. But anyway, the point that we were here to talk about, when you look at the creatures of evil in Tolkien's works, most of them can seemingly be traced back to Morgoth, with him having tainted something or other in some way, and the wargs don't appear to be any different. 
They are, in some ways, slightly different from wolves in that they are truly evil beings bred for a specific purpose, where wolves are more wild animals with no true allegiances. Wolves possessed their own language that was said to be dreadful, but by the time of the Third Age had become more submissive to allow the likes of orcs and goblins to ride them into battle. So not quite as powerful as the likes of Karkroth or Draugreen in the earlier days, but still a terrifying foe to come across in battle. Now before my question of the day, I would like to talk about our amazing sponsor, Squarespace. If you are looking to create a website, whatever your skill level, Squarespace makes everything not just simple, but very professional looking too. It is easy to include a fully integrated commenting system, along with the use of their powerful blogging tools to categorise, share and schedule your posts. Do you wish to buy or sell something? Well, Squarespace's powerful e-commerce is easy to set up with you also being able to add simple to use extensions. These tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, ship items all over the world and much more. You need something? They have a way to do it. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash broken sword to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So I hope you enjoyed this video for today, but now it is time for my question for you all, which is, do you like the idea that wargs are descended from the original werewolf? Or do you think that this is maybe a bit extreme and you have another theory you would like to believe is correct instead? Maybe they are just some wild animals that had been bred with something else and they developed the gift of speech. Who knows? I'd love to know your thoughts though, whether it's based on words written or just some great fanfiction in your own head. It doesn't bother me. So let me know all of your thoughts on this in the comment section below. And now, firstly, to quickly mention our other channels that will all be linked in the description below. And this does include the new Attitude Wrestling channel that we have brought in to present for by some friends. So please check any of those out if the subjects may interest you. And now also to shout out our patrons, with firstly our Divine Power tier members of Kevin, Abram and Matt, you are all awesome. And a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheeth, Denver Seal and Gregory. And as well, I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Bill, Evil Chameleon, Jennifer and Finrod Felagund as well. Every single one of you is a true legend of the Bro Hero. And now finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you are enjoying what you're seeing on this channel, then please think about hitting the like button on the video, hitting that subscribe button on the channel, along with the bell icon too, so that you can be notified of all future uploads. And with that, I will say thank you again if you've managed to reach the very end of this video with me, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.